one to one, who is the, the Johnny Cash of social media, all dressed in black. Uh, you killed my space just to I watch see, it die. Yeah, I, see like, you, uh, I see you got uh, the memo today. Yeah, there we go. Um, Jack um, works with Engage One to One, probably works with more companies in the franchise space and social media than anybody else I know. A couple hundred brands, I think, right. they're about, and probably a couple of thousand Facebook pages or oh, thousands. Uh, you know, tens of thousands. Tens of thousands. So um, we're going to turn it over to Jack. We're very thankful for Engage One to One being a sponsor this year. And um, thanks, everybody, for coming today. I hope you really get a lot out of the presentation. So. Thanks very much. Yeah, you, can, you can leave that there. Hi, everybody. Uh, we're going to make this, like social media, very interactive. So uh, please don't save your questions till the end. If you, if you want to call me out on something or you know, call shenanigans, please shout it out at any time. And if you don't, I'll be, uh, I'll be engaging with each one of you at some point throughout this, uh, throughout this chat. So um, what we wanted to talk about today is leveraging social platforms. And we're going to, um, we're going to speak specifically about monitoring in social platforms, but also a, a few other topics. And I thought um, it was actually good placement to talk about monitoring and engaging with people on various platforms after uh, Clarissa's opening discussion and, uh, and saying what can go wrong. Um, now we want to talk a little bit about what can go right with your brand and with your franchise system and maybe with your own personal identity as well. So here we go. Um, we're going to talk specifically about what platforms and where we want to engage with customers, potential customers. We'll talk a little bit about who should be doing this work. What I really am not going to get too deep into at this point is why. Um, one of the things I love about FranCamp and really where the, the entire um, idea of FranCamp started was with um, so many social media conferences and so many franchising events and conferences, there, there's a lot of discussion on why someone should use social media. And I think um, we're probably all on the same page here within this room that, that you should use social media for your franchise brand. Um, that's, uh, that's one of the, the great things about FranCamp is we can kind of jump past that should we or shouldn't we uh, discussion, but um, for those that uh, that need a little bit of a refresher, there's a lot of reasons why you could use social media, and you've seen all of these about a thousand times. Things like enhancing the brand experience, and launching new products, and customer service, and recruiting new franchisees, and public relations. Don't forget about employee engagement and franchise relations and reputation management and probably the most important thing my daughter tells me we need to do something on Facebook that's the number one reason why a CEO agrees to do something in social media a, uh, a global marketing chief that I know in Chicago um, also added this next one to our list that, that I, I really like and it really um, it really comes down to what most franchisors need to think about why they're doing social media and that comes down to selling more stuff to more people at higher prices so um, if we can get past some of the uh, some of the enhancing brand experience discussions and that sort of thing and realize that you know that's really why most brands are using social media selling more stuff to more people at higher prices um, so let's start there and talk about where are we going to, or I'm sorry, who is actually going to be in charge of using social media channels to sell more stuff to more people at higher prices, or any of those other things like enhancing the brand experience? Who's going to be doing this within any organization? It's my belief that social media starts with franchisors empowering franchisees. So, it's not all about controlling what your franchisees are saying in social. It's not all about doing it for them. It's not all about stopping them from doing something in social media. Let's focus on empowering franchisees to use the social platforms that we're about to, to uh, discuss. Engage One to One has been working with franchise systems since 1998. 
long before there was such a thing as social media, doing uh, public relations and marketing and, and uh, business development software. Um, what we've found over the years, even with the advent of social media, is these numbers have not changed. When it comes to marketing and communications and now social media, these numbers are, are, uh, are pretty, uh, pretty steady. About 20% of any system's franchisees will want to jump in and use social media. They already have a Facebook page up. They're already engaging their local customers. They're already answering questions. Um, they're already driving traffic into their local stores, we hope. 60%, the majority, are sort of in that middle space. They're not really sure about social media. Um, they may see that, uh, that there's a benefit to it. Um, they typically say, what, what's, what's the reason that they haven't jumped in yet? What's the typical reason? Don't have the time. I'm very busy. I'm running a store. I don't have the time to do that, such a thing. Um, and then you'll have 20% on the other end of the spectrum who, no matter what you do, you can give them things, you can threaten them, you can, you can, uh, uh, you can come up with, with um, any excuse why they should do it, and, and they will not touch it with a 10-foot pole. They just will not use social media. So that's okay. This is not just a social media problem. This is basically a, a marketing issue. Um, what we can do is come up with a different solution for, for uh, jumping into social platforms for each one of these, each one of these uh, types of franchisees or outlets. So for our first group, the people who are already active in social media, um, the number one thing we hear from those franchisees when we ask, you know, what else do you need is they tell us that they need content. They may already have a Facebook page up, they may already have a Twitter account, they may already have a blog that they do, but um, they need content. They, they may only be updating the blog once every two weeks, and maybe they're only posting something to Facebook um, once a week or twice a week. They need to do more, but they don't know what else to talk about. They need content. That's where we see franchisors empowering franchisees. Someone within the, the, the corporate structure, create, or maybe an agency, creating that content creating those YouTube videos, writing those blog posts, um, writing some Facebook posts, or uh, finding articles that, uh, that you want to share over, over social channels. For the group in the middle who is unsure about social media, I don't know, should we do it, should we not, maybe there's a benefit, um, you need to give them tools to make it easy for them to do, to solve that problem of I don't have enough time to deal with social media. More importantly, you need to give them results. And, and maybe it's the results of that first group that's already using social media. Um, show them that if they do this in social media, if they post content and engage with their customers and potential customers, they'll sell more stuff to more people at higher prices. Um, that's what that group in the middle needs more, more than anything, is uh, results. They need to be assured that this is not just a colossal waste of time. For the group in the, at the bottom that, that will never touch social media, um, unfortunately there's only one solution. You have to do it for them. Someone at corporate, marketing department, operations, whomever, has to do social media for that group of franchisees. There's no other way around it. We can't come up with a better mousetrap to make those people do it on their own. It's just not going to happen, so let's, let's not uh, waste any time on that. Um, so, any questions about what I mean by franchisors empowering franchisees? Any thoughts on these numbers? Do these reflect what, what your systems are, are looking at right now? Yes. Using a third party like an agency or or, or software. Yeah. 
You know, I think, um, I think that really comes into the um, giving them tools or, or giving them um, someone at an agency who's going to actually uh, do some of this work for them or creating content for them or, or helping them along the way. Um, so maybe it isn't just saying giving them tools, but maybe it's giving them, um, uh, giving them help or, or giving them a, a third party or an agency to, uh, to actually do some of that work for them. Any, any other questions on this before we move on? Okay. Um, let's get into what platforms we're talking about. Um, and this is where, this is where we're going to go interactive here, right? Um, so I want to go around the room and ask each and every one of you, what platform or platforms are most effective for your system, for your clients, for, you know, whatever type of business structure you're in? What's the most effective, um, the best use of your time? Is it Twitter? Is it YouTube? Is it Facebook? Is it a blog? Is it none of the above? So, so let's find out from everyone in the room. And we're going to start over here. Good morning. Good morning. Um, that's a really hard question to answer. I think that they're all really so important, but I'm going to answer it for a little bit. Because I use them a lot, so I'm going to all the other sites, but if I was to give one, I'd probably use Facebook. Okay. Because they're all hard. Great. Thank you. Uh, let's, uh, thanks for bringing the mic over, Deb. Uh, let's, uh, let's, uh, let's pass this along to. Uh, uh, to Matt from the IFA, for, from the IFA standpoint, what's the most important single channel in, in social marketing for the IFA? For us, it's probably our website and surrounding that our digital um, publications, which then feed our social networks. So it's we're the, a little different given yeah, we're not absolutely. Azure, Z, or a. Supplier. So it, it's it's the 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 weekly email that feeds back into the website or maybe the, the Tumblr blog with some of that same content as well? Right. Okay. Very good. Which also feeds Smart Brief, which feeds the Insider, et cetera. Okay. Great. Yes. Most Hi. important platform for you. Uh, right now for us, our, for our franchisees, it's, uh, it's Facebook because our consumer, our end consumer has a very visual product in their flooring when they're done, so they like to post before and after. So that works very well for us. Very good. Facebook right now for us. I'm with her, so I don't want to be redundant. Okay, very good. I'm going to echo Facebook. Okay. For us, it's our company blog. Company blog. Is that um, something that is, uh, uh, tell me what company you're with. Okay, so it's, um, it's, uh, it, it's more than just a blog, though. There, there's a whole website full of content there. It, it starts right? on the blog and we post all that content on Facebook and Twitter as well, but we get enough feedback on the blog itself that that's probably where our main focus is. Very good. All right, thank you. I'm with him. Okay. So another blog, good. Rebecca. Hey. Hi. We're an agency, so it, it kind of depends on whether it's a B2B customer or a B2C customer, but I guess for us as an agency, um, LinkedIn is probably the most used. Really? So mm -hmm. for your agency, for your mm -hmm. own agency's business, right. LinkedIn is the most important one. Right. What about for the, the franchise systems who are your customers? I would say probably Facebook, although Pinterest is becoming really interesting. Interesting. There we go. Thank you. Yes? Um, it's Facebook for us, for sure. Uh, I'm Dan with IFA, so we'll go with the website. Okay. <laughs> Facebook, number one. Great, great, thank you. Yeah, I'll, I'm gonna let our marketing manager comment. <laughs> I think for us, and Dev, Dev did a great job of getting computer explorers up to the world of social media, and right now I think that our franchisees are trying to figure out the best form. YouTube is the best commercials that we have to put out there. Right now we're struggling to see if that's the website our franchise owners themselves do LinkedIn as a group, so we were kind of scattered. So it could even be a, a case of most important platform depending upon what you're doing. Is it franchise sales, LinkedIn? Is it for your, your consumer marketing, Facebook, right? Okay. I would probably say our electronic, you know, uh, monthly newsletters as well as LinkedIn mm -hmm. uh, for franchise recruitment more than anything else and then our corporate and individual blogs. Very good. 
Todd, how about value pack? For value pack, uh, there's really three. We have more consumer engagement corporately with Facebook. Our franchisees use Twitter. They push out deals on behalf of their advertising customers. And then from a franchise recruitment standpoint, we found YouTube to be the most effective. Really? Very interesting. Okay, so three different things going on, three different platforms that, that are uh, most important, most relevant for those things. Excellent. For yes? our consumer marketing, Facebook is where we see the most engagement. Okay. Yeah, I'm with her. Okay. <laughs> Two more Facebooks, yes. Yeah, yes, we're, sir. Uh, we're internet marketing, Kigo, so I'd say the, our blog and LinkedIn. Okay. Yeah, again, we're a supplier. Uh, uh, our blog, LinkedIn, and Google Plus is being pushed for a Google Plus, by Google, excellent. By Google. Good to hear, yes. So. Um, I think blogs and Twitter and probably then Facebook. Okay. Oh, thank you. I was anticipating how we to walk across the room. Uh, um, for us, it's our blog and LinkedIn, for sure. Okay. So, so far, um, I'm excited to hear so many people talking about a blog. I'm, I know Thomas is as well. So, so Dan, how about you? Well, we're, we're with brand journalists, so we are very big on that. That was a uh, that was a, a planted question. So, and, and sir, I'm, I'm sure you will uh, you will agree with that as well, right? So, okay, very good. Joe, how about you? Um, Jack, I was tweeting and I didn't hear the question. <laughs> Hi, Joe. Welcome to Fran Camp. Um, uh, most important social platform for for your business, Joe. Is it is it Facebook? Is it blog? Is it MySpace? Uh, right now, it's been uh, it's been linked. <laughs> it's been LinkedIn uh, and our our franchise our blog on our homepage of the website. Okay. Yes. I handle 12 different clients and I would say the universal for them is Facebook. For my personal business, I would probably say a combination of Facebook and my blog. Okay, very good. Nicole. Um, you know, for me, most important is kind of a double-edged sword. You kind of have to put some metrics around that. If I'm defining most important as most traffic, then I'm actually going to go with stumble upon. Um, if I'm actually going with highest consumer engagement, and with the emphasis on the word consumer, then I'm going to go with Facebook. Uh, franchise sales or B2B, obviously LinkedIn. Okay, very good. I'm the editor of the IFA Smart Brief, so for me, um, it's, it's really a lot of content and stuff. Um, I, I find that I'm putting out blogs and all of that. Um, I would say for us right now, it's probably Twitter and Facebook. That's obviously because that's our new social media that we're re reaching out to our customers and also prospects. Okay. Um, we're a, a corporate investigations business, a, um, a franchised one. It's a very early stage business. Um, and right now we're, we're heavily engaged in, in, in B2B relationships, primarily with lawyers. And we find most of those guys are, uh, are very active on LinkedIn. So we're, we're spending a lot of time on that. Good. Great. I'm with FranNet, and um, uh, best medium is LinkedIn, followed closely by YouTube and blogging. Uh, I'm with you at Engage One to One, and I would say that Twitter is our most used platform within our business. Um, for our agency, it's blogging completely, and that's what drives everything for us and a lot of client interactions, and we've already in a very new agency picked up clients from our blog, so. Great, good to hear. LinkedIn. Okay, more LinkedIn, great. Yes. Um, I'm Kim, I'm with Omega Learning Center, and we do a lot of advertising offline, so our website would probably be number one, but I'm really into the Facebook thing right now, so. Sure. We have seven um, centers now, so I'm learning a lot. Hi, I'm Tisha Roseman with Nothing Bunt Cakes, and for us right now, it's Facebook. Very good. I'm with uh, Express Employment Professionals, and so uh, for the franchise or for our corporate headquarters, it's uh, Facebook, LinkedIn, and blogs, and uh, for our uh, franchisees, it's mainly Facebook and LinkedIn. 
Uh, for us, being an agency, probably content specifically, so blog, uh, big in the G plus as well, uh, Facebook of course, and then uh, Twitter a little bit as well. I'm with him. Um, you know, we represent a lot of brands. So I really believe the blog is really important. I think it's important to distinguish between franchise development and consumer marketing because they're very different in the goals you try to achieve. For franchise development, blogs, LinkedIn um, seem to work better. Um, for consumer stuff, you know, Facebook is the king. LinkedIn, Twitter, um, Pinterest I'm a big fan of, and Foursquare is still really strong. So. I think from a, uh, sorry, uh, BJ Emerson with uh, Tasty Delight and Planet Smoothie. Uh, from a consumer perspective, uh, Twitter, we actually still have more Twitter followers uh, than we do Facebook fans, um, just because we like the proactive um, ability there with uh, Twitter. Uh, Foursquare um, as well. I think for our franchisees, the communication on Facebook has been good just internally uh, interacting there. But from a franchise development standpoint, we've actually got more uh, you know, new leads from the different places we've been able to share our story in, in venues like this. And uh, so people are calling uh, as a result of that. From a consumer standpoint, I would have been very disappointed if you didn't say Twitter, because that's, it, it's uh, uh, Tasty Delight has such a great story on Twitter. And Deb. from moving from Computer Explorers to having my own business, I'm trying to convert my followers from LinkedIn and Twitter to my Facebook page. But I will tell you, and Thomas touched on this, Pinterest is starting to be the newest traffic driver to my face, my own Facebook page, and my blog. So it's it's a new one, but and, it's great. And the, uh, the the research we're seeing early on with Pinterest is that's not an isolated case, um, especially not just from driving conversations, but actually driving dollars. So still very early, but yes. I'm sorry. No, please go ahead. Mm -hmm. With Pinterest, I think it is more of a B2C at this point, but does that mean that you know, we're not going to figure out the, the B2B uh, uh, application for, for Pinterest? You know, maybe that will be uh, 2013. Um, so with everyone in the room, it sounds like there's some good diversity happening there. I'm thrilled to hear about that. A lot of people talking about blogs, a lot of people talking about LinkedIn, especially from a business development and a recruiting standpoint. Um, typically what we hear is it's, it's you know, almost 100% Facebook when I ask a, a group of this size. So I'm glad that it isn't 100% Facebook. But obviously Facebook is the big gorilla right now. This is where um, most brands are, are, even if they're not finding success there in engaging customers and and moving the needle and increasing sales. Uh, that's where they think the, uh, the best likelihood of doing those things is going to happen. And the reason is there's 800 million people using this thing. So of course, Facebook should be part of everyone's plan. And this is where you should be um, looking to leverage social media, probably first, uh, maybe foremost. Uh, this is where you should be engaging those those uh, customers and potential customers and, uh, and, and maybe even some potential franchisees. However, I want to remind you that there are six billion people on this planet that don't use Facebook. So think about that. 800 million using it, that's great. But by no means is that a majority of the people on this planet. So. Keep that in mind every time someone wants to only use Facebook for something, that there are six billion people out there not using that particular, uh, that particular platform. So we, we, uh, we heard from all of you that, that everyone's using at least one of these. Some of you are, are using several of these platforms. And I wanted to put this up and talk a little bit about the, the workflow of engagement and what types of content should live on various platforms and why. Um, a, lot of, a lot of people are just using Facebook for their brands, right? And, and again, the idea here is to get people
just making sure just making sure you're awake, Paige. I'm sorry, yes? Say hello to Australia because there's a cat, and I know you love cats, sitting there watching the screen and listening to your every word. Really? A cat right now. All right. Where's my laser pointer? Hi, kitty. <laughs> so, um, so again, we're trying to get to your local franchisee store. We want to drive traffic into that store, whether you're selling frozen yogurt or pizza or cat food. Um, that's the end game for, for this exercise. Most brands are relying on Facebook. People, we actually will go over here. Follow me again, Beige. Wake up. Okay. So most brands are engaging with consumers on Facebook and then trying to get those people to come into the local store, right? Makes sense. You can do coupons. What else can you do on Facebook that you really can't do on some other platforms to drive people into that local store? Coupons, contests sales, right, um, talking about some event happening in the store, you know, maybe cat grooming event happening next Tuesday at, at whatever store. So all of those things can be conversations happening on Facebook that you really can't have on some of the other platforms, right? You know, the, it, Facebook is visual, it's video, it's, um, it's open to comments, so engagement flows very easily, so it's... Uh, it's, uh, it's the perfect place to have those discussions. So some of that stuff may happen on your blog, and we're, we're not talking only about WordPress. Um, any blog will do. Um, but we're talking about maybe some more, some more in-depth discussion or information is on that blog. Um, so the content there is very different than, than the content that's on Facebook. We move over to, everyone's talking today about Pinterest and, and how that's driving people. Um, we're seeing people being driven directly from Pinterest to that store. And maybe it's, it's actually an e-commerce store, right? It's, it's not a, a physical location. Um, people can drive directly from YouTube if there's a good call to action in a video to, to go to that local store today, right? <laughs> Uh, same with Google Plus. Maybe it's some of that same type of content that's on uh, that's on Facebook. But what we're not really seeing is having a conversation with a, a potential customer on Twitter, and and they go directly to the store, right? I mean that could happen. They could over a long period of time, you know, develop that relationship with someone, or maybe. Um, in some cases, there's, there's a, a, a coupon or a special offer or an invitation that someone uh, sends out over Twitter that would drive traffic in, into the store. But typically what we're seeing is the engagement that happens on Twitter is maybe driving someone to one of these other places first, right? It's a link to a YouTube video or it's a link on Twitter that drives them to your Facebook fan page. And that's where they see the coupon or the contest or the cat grooming event that's happening next week. So don't think that the, the content that you're putting in one of these places is all going to be the same because it may be Twitter to Facebook to your local store or it could be uh, more likely, it could be uh, a search and when I say search, I mean Google. Come on, let's face it, right? Um, it could be a search of pizza and Naperville, Illinois. Let me ask the, the, the guys from location three. If I search pizza and Naperville, Illinois, am I gonna go to a Facebook page? No. I'm going to find a local listing hopefully a website, um, maybe a blog, right? Um, more and more likely a Google Plus page for that pizza place in, in Naperville, right? So, so that's a new pattern we're seeing. Search to Google Plus 
and then call to action to go into that local store. Um, I think there's a big misunderstanding, especially in the franchise industry, that search will lead to a Facebook page. Um, search will definitely, especially if you're using Google, search will definitely go to YouTube, right? First or second thing that, that's going to show up for pizza and whatever town is probably going to be you know, a video of someone, someone in that town making pizza. So keep this in mind when you're deciding what content you're putting on what platform and what, um, what you're doing on each platform. Are you, are you designing something and writing something specifically for franchise development? Are you doing it for store traffic, uh, you know, drive people into that pizza place? Or, you know, what's your, what's your goal every time you go to put some content up and think about which platform it needs to go to? Questions on this? Any, any questions or comments? Yeah, no, I, I think that's a good exercise. So let's say we do have a, a contest we, we want to do. Okay, where do, we, where do we want to put that contest? Do we want to have it on Facebook or do we want to have it on our, our, our brand's website or you know, where would you like it? Um, if it's a contest, to me, that's really easy to do on Facebook. So let's do it on Facebook. If you announce it on Facebook that we're doing this contest, who's going to see that announcement? Your, your fans, right? Um, if you put it up as a, as a status update. Um, you, you have to think about who do you want to participate in that contest? Your Facebook fans? Or do you want to get some new people, perhaps? So again, not everyone's on Facebook. Um, if you're doing a contest on Facebook, it might make sense to talk about it on Twitter and try to drive people to that, that Facebook page where you're doing the contest. It might make sense to do a little bit of a video about that contest and put that on YouTube. And maybe someone will see that video and want to participate in the contest or promotion or, or whatever it is you're doing on Facebook. So again, don't think of the, the platforms as sort of the end game. Think of them as channels that sometimes you need to go from one to get to another. What I don't want to leave you with is the idea that you have to do everything on every channel. You know, and, and you don't care about getting your potential customers to all of your channels, right? That's a huge mistake that I see a lot of companies, especially franchise systems, making. They're focused on getting people to go and like their page. Why? Zuckerberg doesn't need any more traffic, right? You need to sell stuff. You need to engage with those customers. And I see it all the time with people saying, you know, like us on Facebook, find us on Facebook. That's great. You, you need to do that to get some more people to your Facebook page. But that shouldn't be your goal in social media. Use Facebook to drive people to your store. Don't use real estate in your store to drive people to Facebook, you know? Um, those people in your store, they're already your customers, we hope, unless you, you know, have really horrible people in the store driving them away. So, you know, don't spend all of their time in the store trying to get them to, to go to Facebook. You know, sure, it helps keep them, you know, interacting with your brand and everything, but let's focus on the people who aren't already in your store and let's get them into your stores. Yes, there's a question over here.
Right. It, it's a great question. The question was, and let me make sure I'm uh, phrasing this the right way, you know, what's your balance of selling to someone on Facebook versus other types of maybe more engaging and interesting content, right? Um, the standard rule for uh, the people I work with is I, I tell them 10% of your content can be about you or your brand or your stores and that includes coupons and contests and promotions and all of that, you know, the, the, the cat grooming clinic or whatever that, that's happening coming up, right? About 10% of that content um, uh, on Facebook can be that stuff. The other 90% needs to be something else. Um, that's a tough number, right? Because now, besides all of the stuff that we just talked about here with coupons and driving people into a store, now we have to come up with, you know, more content that isn't going to do any of that stuff, but it, it's, it's, part of, it's, it's part of social media that you have to have something interesting to talk about in order to uh, get your, your more marketing uh, type messages out there. So you do need to have content that isn't just about your coupon and your contest and your, and your big sale. Um, you need to talk about lifestyle stuff. Right? You need to talk about the customer and the consumer and, you know, it's great in the franchising structure because on a local level you can talk about what's happening around town. You can talk about local sports and local schools and local charities and things happening in each one of those communities that have nothing to do with, you know, pizza or whatever other type of service that your franchise system is, is promoting. You know, you're talking about things happening in, in that community. Yes? Mm -hmm. there, there can be if you don't localize it. If you take the same piece of content and put it out over let's say you have 150 franchisees and you, and you push it out over 150 franchisees Twitter accounts, the same exact content. After a while, the Twitter police may come knocking because it's, it's going to look like you're just sending the same message out over all of these, uh, all of these Twitter handles. You don't want to do that, you know, number one, so the, the Twitter police don't come knocking. But number two, you want to localize that content in some way for each one of those franchisees. You know, it's not just a, a national marketing message. It's something that should be somewhat tailored to each individual franchisee or each community or marketplace or, or, or maybe at, even at a state level. So as long as you're, you're tweaking that content a little bit for each of the franchisees, um, there's not the danger in, in um, you know, making the, the Twitter gods angry. So any other questions on that before we move on? Um, we'll talk a, a bit more about marketing, uh, I'm sorry, about monitoring at this point. Um, and what I want to mention with, uh, with monitoring is we've talked a lot about Twitter and Facebook and blogs. Um, do not forget ratings and review sites when you're monitoring your own brand and your competitors. Um, we consider ratings and review sites to be the original social media. This is where one consumer is talking to another consumer about a brand or a product or a service or a franchise system or a franchisee. So it's great to know everything that people are saying about you on Twitter. It's great to know everything people are saying about you on Facebook, but don't forget to uh, make sure you're monitoring um, uh, TripAdvisor if you're in the hospitality industry, or Open Table if you're a, a restaurant chain, um, or Google Reviews if you're anybody, right? So depending upon your industry, um, you, you want to make sure you're looking at, at all different types of ratings and review sites. So let's talk a little bit about monitoring here. Um, I really see monitoring social media as two different things. There, there are two different types of monitoring. The first type is what we typically think of, monitoring keywords. So your own brand, or if you have multiple brands, 
um, your own products and services, um, also monitoring your competitors, right? See, seeing what people are saying about you, what are they saying about them, um, instant focus group for free, right? Um, and also industry issues or other topics that, that are important to whatever industry you're in. There's another type of monitoring, though, that, that I think a lot of systems are not doing, and that's not monitoring by keyword or brand name, but monitoring specific people. So think about monitoring your customers, even if they're not talking about your brand or they're not talking about your competitors, but have a group of, of important customers or, or maybe potential franchisees or some other group of very important uh, stakeholders to you. Monitor what they're talking about in social because they're not talking about your brand all the time. They're talking about what they're doing this weekend. They're talking about you know, their plans for the summer. They may be talking about you know, opening a new business at the, at, at the end of this year. Those are things that you want to find out about so you can jump into those conversations and, uh, and actually engage with those people. The worst thing you can do is only reach out to a customer when they're talking about your brand. You know, that, that's a, a little self-serving. So if you do have some, um, some high-level customers, important stakeholders, franchisees, reach out to those people when they're, when they're just talking about something um, that isn't just about you and your business interests. That's the way to engage people and have conversations outside of the brand. And, and I did put franchisees at the top because that's the number one thing um, that franchise systems and franchisors tell us when we say, okay, who do you want to monitor? Number one answer, our own franchisees. So let's talk a little bit about monitoring versus engaging. Monitoring and reporting, in my view, is lurking around at a cocktail party and then going home and writing about it in your diary, right? You're not talking to anyone, you're not introducing yourself to anyone, you're, you're a wallflower. You're, you're the guy way in the back there. You're not part of this really hip crowd here in the middle of the conversation. But monitoring and engaging is actually listening to people and then stepping into this, this very attractive group of people with awesome jackets and interacting with them at the party, asking them questions, answering their questions. We see this way too often outside of the franchising industry especially, but with many brands who, who focus so much on monitoring, but they don't do anything with that information, except make a nice report and make a nice uh, pie chart and, and you know, turn it into their CEO at the end of the quarter. And they can say, well, look, you know, here's, here's how many people were talking about us. But if you're not doing something with that information, and I'm not saying doing something down the road, you know, making better business decisions. I'm talking about doing something immediately. You're, you're really missing the boat. Because social media, in my view, is just the newest form of telephone. And if people are calling you on the telephone, you want to answer the telephone. If they have questions or complaints or comments, you want to respond to that phone call. So let's talk a little bit about responding. And we'll do the easy stuff first. The, the questions. If someone asks a question on Twitter, Facebook, or any of the other uh, social sites, reply as soon as possible. Um, we've seen brands get asked questions that go unresponded to for days, weeks, months, and, and you've just lost that customer. Um, think about it again as a telephone. If someone called your corporate office or one of your franchisee's stores and left a voicemail and said, hi, this is Jack, I've got a question about your product and service, and they left that on a voicemail, would, would you want someone to respond to that and call that person back and ask or answer their question? The reality in social media right now is a lot of brands are, are choosing to ignore those questions. You know, again, it gets back to, well, it's, it's too hard and it, it takes too much time and we're just too busy to answer customers' questions. Um, think about who should respond to a question. A lot of times social media kind of gets put on the desk of the marketing and, and PR folks, right? But maybe they're not the right person to answer a question. Maybe it should be someone in customer service. 
Maybe it should be a salesperson. Maybe it should be a local franchisee. You know, if it's a question about what time are you guys open uh, on Thursday, you know, maybe the local franchisee should be the, the appropriate person to answer that question and maybe engage in some deeper conversation with that, uh, with that customer. One thing I, I forgot to put on here, um, anytime someone asks your brand a question, and this is especially on Twitter, anytime someone asks a question, answer the question and follow that person. I see this far too often. Brands will answer a question, respond to a complaint, maybe do a good job with that, but then they don't follow that consumer back. And the number one reason is, well, we don't really know if, if that's a, a long-term customer. We don't want him clogging up our, our, our feed of Twitter that we're watching. Who cares? It's someone who actually reached out to you, tagged that person as someone that you've had a conversation with, and follow them. You don't have to read everything they write, right? So follow that person back. It's the, it's the most complimentary thing you can do to a person on Twitter, is to follow them back. I've had discussions with brands myself, and after the, the, the back and forth and the question and answer, um, they didn't follow me back. And, and to me, that's like, wow, they, they wanted to lose my phone number, didn't they? they you know. Um, so follow everyone back who follows you, who asks you a question, who has a complaint or, or anything else. Speaking of complaints, let's talk now about negative comments. Um, my best advice when someone says something negative about your brand and you, you just monitored it, you just saw it, the best thing to do is to take a very brief pause. Don't jump on it 10 seconds after the person posts it on Twitter or Facebook. Take a step back and see if one of your loyal customers, who's your fan or your follower, is going to step in and defend you. Right? I have a feeling if I went on Facebook or Twitter right now and said something really nasty about Tasty Delight, I'd probably get attacked right, by, by their, their vicious fans who want to defend that brand at any cost. Uh, sorry? Yeah, there you go. So. So um, take a brief pause because you do have those fans and you do have those followers who, who are loyal fans of, of your brand. That's why they're, they're on there with, uh, with you on Facebook to begin with. So let them come in and defend you because if some customer defends you, it's a thousand times better than anything else you can come up with yourself. Yes? Yeah, so, so you turned a critic into an evangelist some, somewhere along the process. That, that, that's fantastic. That's, that, that's a case study we, that we need to do right there. Um, so brief pause, see if anyone else comes to your defense. Uh, if not, you need to jump in and answer uh, that person or respond to that person's issue. Respond to all thoughtful comments. It, it is not acceptable to say, that's just too hard, you know? We don't, we don't, we don't want to say no, you know, um, that person's actually right. We did do a lousy job with that. So let's just bury our heads in the sand and not respond whatsoever. You have to respond. And, and I say thoughtful comments because if it's something that's just hate speech or something, you know, ridiculous, you know, obviously you, you, you can, uh, you can decide not to, uh, to get into that hole. Um, respond on the same platform. I think that's kind of a no-brainer that you, you want to limit uh, uh, the, the people that are seeing that issue. So, you know, don't take it somewhere else, but respond um, on that same platform. But then take the conversation offline as soon as you can. You know, sorry to hear about that. May I have my customer service manager contact you via phone right now? Get it offline. Um, the, the worst thing you can do is keep that negative conversation going back and forth for two or three days on Twitter. Um, so take it outside, as we like to say. Um, don't delete the post. And, and this is something that a lot of brands do. Oh, someone complained about our, our company or our, our product or service. Just delete that right off of the, the page. 
that is the worst thing you can do because there are those people out there who have taken a, a screenshot of their complaint on your page. And as soon as you delete it, guess what? That screenshot's going to be all over the internet in other places saying, aha, they deleted my negative comment. They didn't like you know, what, what I had to say and they deleted, they deleted that comment. I'm being put down by the man, right? So don't delete anything unless, again, it's, it's hate speech or, or, or something else like that. And if you do delete something, make sure you tell people that you deleted it, you know? Just to let everybody know there was some, some really um, uh, inflammatory speech happening here on our page, we decided to delete it in accordance with our social media policy, which, by the way, is posted over here on the side of our, of our blog or somewhere. Yeah. Yes? Yeah, what he's saying is make sure that you have a censorship policy or, or it's part of your overall social media policy and have that posted. Um, quite frankly, it, it's, it's a very easy answer then. Well, you know, in accordance with our policy, which is posted right here for everyone to see, it's no secret. Um, you know, we decided to delete this, uh, this hateful uh, conversation that was happening. Talk briefly about uh, positive comments that consumers make about you. Yes, it, it does happen from time to time. Um, we want to remind everyone to cross-pollinate positive content. So if someone goes on Twitter and says your brand is awesome, or someone goes on Facebook and takes a picture of, of them enjoying your product at one of your franchisees' locations, or, or any other type of content that a consumer might create, Take that and, and share it with the rest of your fans and followers, maybe on other platforms. Because remember, the people who you're talking to on Twitter may never read that great review that you got on TripAdvisor or Open Table or something like that, right? So you want to take that review and put it on your company blog or your Facebook page or, or tweet about this great review that we just got. Because there's a lot of people that do not read ratings and review sites. Um, consumers may be searching for you and find your blog, but they'll never find your Facebook fan page that way, and they may never go to your Facebook fan page. So if you've got some great story you're telling on your blog or, or a comment that some uh, customer made on your blog, take that and, and share it over to your Facebook fan page as well. So make sure that all of these things are, are being uh, cross-pollinated to other platforms so other people can see them. And of course, there are Facebook fans that just are on Facebook 24 hours a day and they never read anything else. So um, anything that you're doing, especially videos, anything you're doing on Pinterest, take all of that stuff and put it on Facebook too, just because there are so many people who never leave Facebook. Um, real quick at the end here, um, when you're doing all of this activity, on Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, blogs, Pinterest, all of these other platforms. Um, there's a lot of analysis of that data happening out there. A lot of people are measuring, a lot of people are making pretty charts and graphs, right? The one thing I want to uh, um, remind you is the only thing that really matters at the end of the day to the CEO to uh, any, anyone else within the organization is how is this affecting our bottom line? You know, social media conversations and buzz and activity, how is it affecting sales? How is it affecting franchise leads? How is it affecting store traffic into my pizza places? So don't get too caught up in the individual analytics of each platform. There's a lot of good information, you know, Facebook insights, uh, uh, YouTube has insights now. There's a lot of good data, but so many people get so caught up in how many fans we have and how many followers we have and how many people shared this particular post. Those are good indications along the way of how you're doing, but at the end of the year, do you want to present to your entire company, you know, hey, great news, everybody. We got 11,000 new fans this quarter. 
No, you, you want to be able to tell a story about how Facebook actually helped the company grow, increased sales, took care of, of, of customers' problems or, or whatever your other goal is. Any question on that? Okay, great. Um, the last thing I want to, yes, yes. Let's take a step back. Um, this is a, a, a simple chart that, that I prepared looking at activity and buzz. That's the big blue line there. That's the number of people talking about a particular brand in social media. And I'm just comparing it with their day-to-day -day sales. That's the, the purple line. So at the end of the day, end of the month, end of the quarter, we can take a look at when we had a spike in activity and buzz in social media. Um, when were people talking about our brand more, and, and did that actually move the needle? And of course, we want to take a look at all of the other marketing uh, uh, activities that we did. You know, did we do advertising? Did we do, um, you know, sales? Did we do everything else? Well, you, you would have to plot all of that stuff on, on the same axis as well and look at it and see, okay, we, we had a huge spike in sales here, but we also did this other marketing activity at the same time. So what I'm saying is you've got to include social media activity in that whole marketing matrix that you're probably already doing, I hope. So any other questions on this? Um, the last thing I want to talk about um, and this is Facebook specific, but I thought it was important while we're talking about leveraging platforms. Um, the next thing that we see coming at all of us is integrating advertising. So far today we've been talking about posting and creating blog posts and creating videos and, and things like that. Um, it's all been a little outside of the paid advertising area. And, and I think that's going to... Uh, uh, I think it's all going to merge very soon. We're already seeing a, a lot of uh, franchise systems using Facebook ads. Um, advertising on Twitter is, is growing and, and, and there's so much more that people are going to be able to do very soon. And here's why we see advertising being integrated with your social media plan to be very important. Let's start with a Facebook fan page. So. Here's an example of a page that's uh, got a lot going on. There's some great content here. There's some videos. There are some uh, contests that people can enter. Uh, there's a poll or a survey that people can go in and, and take part of. So very engaging content happening on this particular company's Facebook fan page. However, the problem with what's happening on your fan page is this. Who sees it? your fans, right? And when we're talking about an application on Facebook like this, it's, it's even worse than that. It isn't just your fans that see it, it's the fans who actually take the time to go to your fan page. Has anybody here ever liked a page and then never gone back to it? I do that all the time, right? So we may have liked this page, but if we don't go back to it, we'll never see that really awesome video or that great contest or you know, all of the other activities that, that this brand has going on on their fan page. So the second step is to let people know what's going on on that fan page. So we create a status update saying, you know, check out our new mortgage calculator, or please take part of our new poll, or you won't believe this great video from our cat grooming clinic, whatever it was, right? So, so take what you're doing on that fan page and make sure you continuously tell your fans about it. When you, when you put that in as a status update, it will show up in the news feed of your, uh, of your fans and it will show up in the, uh, in the ticker of your fans as well. And from what we've seen on, on Facebook, the majority of time that people are spending on Facebook is not looking at your page it's they're looking at their news feed and they're looking at their ticker and they're seeing all of that stuff go by so don't just create something it's not the field of dreams you know we built a great contest and someone will just show up right um, make sure you tell people about it and then the third step and this is where we're integrating advertising 
is create a sponsored story or a Facebook ad about that same activity that's happening on your fan page. The reason I'm suggesting creating an ad about that is because that, that middle one, the status update, will be seen by your fans in their news feed. The ad that you see over on the far right side will be seen by your fans and also their friends. That's really, really important. If you're going to grow your fan base, if you're going to grow your community, you can't just keep talking to the same fans over and over. You need to reach out to the friends of those fans and, and bring them into the circle as well. So any questions on this about integrating advertising with your, your status and with your Facebook applications? Okay. Um, I think we're about out of time, yes. So if there's any other questions, I'll, I'll be around for the rest of the day. But um, otherwise, um, here's my contact information at the, at the bottom of the page at Engage One to One. Um, feel free to reach out to me if you've got any questions about anything we talked about here today. Thanks very much.